what's up guys and girls we are playing a little game called spaz or space zombies wait sp space what the hell is it called <laughs> it's so it's space something something oh space something and zombies i don't remember what the something was but it starts with the p that's all i know Oh, I wish I could run this faster. Hurry up! God! I've been waiting all day. Come on, come on, come on, come on! Come on! Oh my god. Stirring up trouble. That doesn't sound good. This is an indie game that has that's gotten some pretty good reviews, and it was on sale for like four four bucks, normal price ten. So I figured I might as well try it out, record some stuff off of it. Figured why not. Um, sorry, I mean a Twizzler. <clears throat> Space is a vast and desolate frontier, covering a seemingly infinite distance. Even the speed of light is dwarfed by the unimaginable scale of our galaxy. It took nearly 250 years to bridge the void between Earth and its closest neighboring star. Mankind had mastered the folding of space-time, but relied on the use of warp gates. Massive drone ships journeyed through deep space for centuries, deploying pairs of warp gates which allowed instantaneous travel between connections. Warp gate travel had not become commonplace until the discovery of a stable element, number 126. This element contained bizarre, transmutable properties allowing it to be reconfigured into different forms of matter. This made it the most valuable and sought after commodity in the universe. Mankind quickly became completely dependent on element 126, which the first miners named Rez, R-E-Z. Due to the increasing demand for Rez, the warp gate network became privatized. Anyone with ample funding was able to deploy new and unregistered warp gates, like a new gold rush. Convoys of miners tra traversed the expanding warp network looking for red deposits, or Rez deposits. This drove them closer and closer to the galactic core, where res deposits became richer and richer. The growing number of isolated colonies became un unmanageable, as unique eco uh, ecologies of each discovered planet intermixed through trade, potential pandemics became a concern. The United Terrain Alliance was formed to control interplanet interplanetary contamination. They moved to heavily restrict gate access. Military blockades began to screen all trade ships traveling between gates, attacking in any unregistered ships that attempted to use them. For a time, the UTA was able to maintain control, but they soon crumbled under the weight of rapid ex expansionism and bureaucracy. Unable to manage their fleets and borders, the military hierarchy... Ah, hierarchy... Ah, I never could say it. Hira ah, forget it. You know what I'm saying. I just can't say it. Collapsed. Without central leadership, the UTA fleets dissolved into a series of isolated subcells that rarely communicated or traveled beyond local space. Each military subcell now struggles to control their system by whatever laws they see fit to implement. Despite the enforced isolation, rogues continue the gold rush while refugees amass hidden away from the UTA's eyes. They survive within the vast junk fields of an abandoned earth where there they build a massive flagship named the Clockwork. With it, they intend to travel to the Galactic Core in search of a legendary mother load of res. Oh, 
Okay, folks, it's that time again. This will be our seventh engine test this week. I don't want to go to bed with radiation burns again tonight, alright? Let's get those puppies fired up good and proper this time. Yes, well, you see, we're lucky the toilet's even flush on this brick. I managed to bootstrap the induction coil to the main core to boost output, but I don't expect it to maintain a viable reaction. Nuclear particle physics and duct tape do not mingle well, yes? Carl, I have no idea what the hell you're talking about. Just turn the bloody thing on. Damn, the magnetic stabler, stabilizer is blue. We have major breaches on deck 6 through 10. Our, escor our escort ships are gone, and, and we're venting atmosphere. We have crew casualties. All crewmen can always be replaced. The ship damage, on the other hand, well, I told you that this piece, could, piece of junk wouldn't hold back an overload. overload. Did you honestly expect any different? Look at what I have to work with here. The blown stabilizer system will have to be replaced before we can even think of trying this again. It's a common part. I'm sure there's another one in the junk field somewhere. We still have a working hangar, so let's fire up the fabricator systems and build a ship to retrieve it. Push space to build a ship. Hangar. Empty hangar. The short bus. <laughs> the short bus is a tiny mining ship designed to break up small asteroids for processing. It has little value in combat, but it's almost non-existent production costs make it a reliable fallback ship. Sure, why not? Ship under construction. Fire your boosters. Does that not look like they're like shooting at us or anything? Seriously, I mean... Nearly everything of importance is marked with the radar, allowing you to see what it when it's off screen. Radar indicators will be pinned to the edge of the screen, showing you the direction and orientation of other ships. If you get confused as to what you should be doing, you can see your primary objective in the ship's logs. Just about every menu you see will have a health indicator. Click the health in indicator to find out useful information about what you're looking at. <sighs> oh, wrong way. I thought the ship was following us. Rising up, straight to the top. Did my time, took my chances. Well, I should fix the stabilizer, but the overlord, the overload compromised the structural integrity of the ship more than I initially thought. We can't jump with a breach like this. I've written up an extensive list of the repairs that will have to be satisfied before I'll conduct another test. Meanwhile, I'll be in my quarters. Let me know when you're done cleaning up your failure. Oh, you've got to be kidding. I really do hate that man. We're doing... We're going to need to replace more than just one ship if we expect to cork the hole anytime soon. That's unfortunately easier said than done. The hole damage vented most of our rest supply. We even lost all the damn liquor. We need to restock before we can build more ships. There is a mining station in the system. Elsa, you've worked with the miners before. See if you can convince them to let us harvest in their territory. system map I'm assuming they were talking about this place deploying warp beacon I contacted the mining base they're all drunk on industrial paint strippers so it wasn't hard to convince them to let us harvest some res we'll have to be very careful around here the mining base is automated and won't think twice about slicing us in half with that mining beam Let's siphon what we need and move on. Your prospecting request has been granted. 
Please refrain from tampering with the automated mining systems. If you happen to be exposed to the vacuum in space, please proceed to the nearest eyewash station and rinse thoroughly. Thank you and have a pleasant day. It should be interesting. The asteroid they are drilling into is even more dense than you, Elsa. There's no way we can crack it. Only a station class core mining beam can come even close. We'll have to grab this bill off the table crafts. I feel like such a transient. The mothership is too slow to scout for res on its own, so it deploys a short range warp beacon that can transfer ships and res back and forth instantly. You can find res by destroying asteroids with weapons fire, mouse one. Fly over res to load it into the cargo hold. Return to the beacon to automatically transfer res back to the mothership for processing. You can see your process res count in the upper left corner of the screen. Keep an eye on how much cargo space your ships have. The more full the cargo bay, the slower that ship will go. Be aware that smaller ships cannot carry large deposits of res. If you do not have a large enough ship, you can always break res apart with weapons fire. Okay, let's see it. Green resource, blue resource, yellow resource. Oh god. Go around. Not enough cargo space. Are you kidding me? Oh. That's all I could get? Wow. This ship sucks. I mean, it could only carry 10 at a time. Oh, hey, I do have a weapon. This is going to take forever, having to just go all the way back and forth. The hell is this green crap? I mean, if the game wasn't so slow paced, then it would be fine. Or at least make the warp gate closer. I mean, come on, look at the distance I'm having to travel while full. I mean, I'm supposed to give them 100 pounds, I'm assuming, and they're only up to 20 after this amount of time. That's kind of ridiculous, don't you think? Let me turn my mic so that my voice is louder. Go, 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 go. Oh. Now we have enough res to build the extra ship we're going to need. Plus, I was able to officially kick ass and salvage another hangar. We should be able to support two ships now. That being the good news, here is the bad news. The explosion all but wiped out our construction database, and nobody backed up their hard drive. Luckily, I was able to recover the data for a single small fighter ship called the Dart. I recommend we build a couple. Our current ships can't even cut butter, let alone stand up against any UTA ships. Well, finally, some progress. Let's see to it that we collect what we need to build two darts. We're not leaving until we have some shit shit for combat. F3. From the hangar view, you can fully customize every aspect of your ship designs. By default, your ship will be outfitted with nothing but surplus components. Even early on, you'll have to access several different components. Click on the mount icons on the ship to see what else you can install. You can also modify shields, engines, and reactors, which power everything on the ship. The more advanced the component, the more it will cost you. Be sure to refit your obsolete ships whenever you unlock new technology. As, as your mothership becomes more advanced, additional hangars will be added. Old hangars will be also be upgraded, allowing them to support larger ships. It's usually why to build the largest ship available if you can afford them.
The surplus cloak is an old design, but still a favorite for smugglers and bounty hunters on a budget. While engaged in cloak, the ship's moving capabilities is somewhat reduced to maintain stealth. Ships firing from a cloak state do 33% bonus damage. This bonus can be further enhanced with research and specials. I ain't sure why not. No, that's it. Shield. Oh, never mind. Okay, F3. Oh, so res, like, disappears, too. That means you better hurry. Is that any short bus ships to dark ships? Okay, well then let's go ahead and get this back to there and then I can change this and then I'll have three dark ships. Or maybe I'm only supposed to have one dark ship and then change this to a dark ship. Although it says build, which kind of makes me think different. I don't know. Three. Change hole. Refit ship. There we go. Well, there we go. Our sleet is slightly less pathetic now. We've got what we need. Now, let's get the hell out of here. So, y'all want to pick my stones and run off, eh? Well, you go right ahead there, Missy, but not without hearing me out first. Y'all help us kick those UTA boys in the jimmy, and me and the boys will fix up that big old ship you got floating around. What you say? I suppose we can trust these people, providing we don't have any money in our pockets. I'm not sure we really have much of a choice. We're weeks away from repairing the clockwork without their help. We have a small and capable fleet now. Why not put it to some use? You are free to switch between all the ships you currently have in your fleet by pressing the number key associated with each hangar. Alternative, uh, alternatively, you can cycle between all your active ships with the E or Q key. Any ships you are not con directly controlling will be controlled by the AI. Ooh. Dock with mining base. That's cool, you can build like an entire army. Dock, 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 underlay, underlay. Welcome, feel free to browse our stocks. We're always looking for able-bodied workers. Take a look at some of the new exciting employment opportunities we offer. Goons for us. A mining problem. The UTA have been confiscating the cargo from some of our mining ships and attempt to use it to establish a lookout post in the area. This is not good for business. We need to destroy their supplies and 